Right, this is Coogan Cassius here for iFilm London. We're in Sheffield. With me, I've got the special one, Kel Brook. Kel, where are we? Tell us. This is this is my area where I where I've been brought up. Uh, you know, from a young kid. This is the Shycliffe Shy area. Behind me is the school I got brought up in, uh, Eris School. This is where I got brought up, and this is where this is where it went down. Yeah. For me as a young kid, you couldn't you couldn't keep me off these streets. So, it's your grand, uh, grandparents' house there, on the right? Yeah, grand, grandparents is there, my aunt is there. And, you know what, what way I mean? are we going, left? Left up here. Left up here. All, all my family, all my family, a lot of my family, all, all living on, the, on, the, on, this, uh, on this estate. Really? Yeah. We're all, we're all just, how, how, we, how we've been brought up, you know what I mean? It's just, we just, we just walk around to each other's houses. Go in, go like in Ramsey each, Street. Yeah, go in each other's fridges. You know what I mean. Get what we want. Yeah. It, it, it's just tight like that. It's it's not even just about our family. Just everyone knows everyone on this on this estate. Are you just the sort of houses that leave their back doors open and everyone just goes through? Yeah, the back everyone and... just in the back. You don't you don't even know who's in your own house. <laughs> but yeah, th th this house here, this this one with the flags outside yeah, here. Yeah. This is where I got brought up as a young kid. You know what I mean? That that's the house where I lived. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, we used to play Kerber, me and kids, like kids chucking, you know, on these on these roads here. But yeah, my aunt is living live in these houses, these houses, my cousins, they're all living on here. So what was it that actually made you decide to sort of put a pair of gloves on in the first place? I used to, I used to watch Bruce Lee films and, and Van Damme films and... Uh, I've always been, I mean, into action films. One, I just, I've just been chucking my hands all over at a young age. I practice, never, never could sit still for a, for a second. Yeah. So my dad turned left down here. Yeah. My dad, uh, my dad took me down to the boxing gym down at Winkerbank because he seen, he seen Ryan Rose was a, lo a local kid. Our, our family and his family are close, so we knew, we knew him and how well he was doing and stuff. My dad brought me down there, and we just did it off. You know what I mean, from there. But you know, Shycliffe School. I mean, I was there as a junior, and, uh, and then I moved to Erie School. They've knocked it down. And, I mean, they've done it all up. And, and these schools, this is where I used to, I used to um, have my school dinners on there. You know what I mean, wagging it and that. Didn't you take a <laughs> lot? Didn't you take a lot of packed lunch to do a school dinner then? No, uh, I didn't take no packed lunch, man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, you know what I mean, try and get what I could at canteen. Well, um, <coughs> got a um, big fight coming up, 7th of July, Carson Jones. Do you say that Carson Jones is going to provide the toughest test to date? Or do you think that you might have faced tougher already than Carson Jones? No, I think, I think this guy's going to be tough, reason being. He's not, he's knocked his last eight out, he's above me in the ratings. Um, he last his last 20, you know, he was badly managed when he first started off and, and now he's training in Big Bear, he's, he's sparring every day with Saul Alvarez and, you know, he's he's coming over here and he's, and he's giving it big man uh, as we've seen at the press conference with his big dicky bow on, I mean, he looked more like a snooker player to me but, uh, that's the, you know, I'm going sure, to show him he's going to come to my city, Steel City of Sheffield and I'm going to show him all the bosses, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to really put, put it on him do you know this whole thing with um, Amir Khan? I mean, Amir Khan doesn't even fight in your weight division at the moment. Obviously, he's been saying he's going to fight in uh, at that um, at Walter weight. And there's a lot. There's been a lot of talk for so long. A lot of people call Amir Khan overrated. Uh, some people say you're overrated. Do you think Amir Khan is overrated? Yeah, I just think it's. it's there's a lot of right behind him, and it is, you know what I mean, he is overrated. I, I think that they're giving him all this, that, and it's, it's not all this, that, is it? it? Don't get me wrong, he's a good fighter, Amir Khan. He is a good fighter, but, you know, he's, when he gets, when he gets, when he gets put on his toes, he, he ends up square, square running. He's got his hands tight, and, you know, there's no lateral movement. I just, I just know that I've got his number. What would you say to people that would imply that the same about you, that, 
you're overrated, what would you say to them people? Oh, by the way, I'm not one of them people, but I'm saying, what would you say to them people that say that? It's hard, isn't it? What, 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 what can you, what can you do? Uh, I've never avoided any fighter. Uh, I'll fight anyone. Yeah, I, I just whatever's put in front of me, you know, I, I I get in there and and I beat him. I think with the fact he's been me a con, he did that in the Olympics and he's had he's had the star treatment. I think I've I've, I've had it hard, work, you know, fighting in working men's clubs, being last on. You know what I mean? Not you know, had it not had it my own way all the time and and I and I've done it I've done it the hard way, not not the easy way, um, the way Khan's done it. Uh, but like, like I said, like we Amir Khan, his, his box like super featherweights, lightweights, and they've been putting him over, and you know, back then, and it, it, when he when he's in with me, he was a puncher, he was accurate, and uh, who can dig a bit. It's a different story, Coogan. To me, it's like, what you're 27 or 26 and on? 27. 27 and on. Um, <clears throat> it seems to me that you're on the verge of something great. You're about to step into this world of after you know you're going to face Carson Jones, you're going to beat Carson Jones, then you're going to fight the, the, the winner of Bailey and uh, Mike Jones, and then from then you're talking about different levels of fighters, aren't you? Because you'll be competing, hopefully for all your fights. You now we'll be at that sort of level. Yeah, the top, the top table. That's what I've. That's what I wanted. Would you rather be judged then after you've faced the yeah. likes of Mike yeah. Jones and? Oh, all the top elite world yeah, weights top, in the world. Top, top elite, th then you can judge me. Um, cause, cause when I get in there, I always people dumb and that they say oh, I'm a, I, I'm kind of lazy fighter. When 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 there's a certain fighter in front of me, um, you know I, do, I just I just do enough kind of thing. But when I'm fighting these elite fighters, you're gonna see you're gonna see things what even I ain't even seen. It's gonna bring the best out in me. And then you can judge me when when I'm when, I, when I'm boxing these top guys at that top table, like you, like you just mentioned, these guys. So um, looking back at the Matthew Atten fight now, obviously it's been a couple of months since then. Um, have you had a chance to sort of go over that and pick out obviously your flaws in that, or if you had any flaws in that, you felt? Yeah, I, I basically did did what I've, I've watched the fight, but I basically did did what I wanted in that fight. Uh, what I can say about that fight, too much respect, too, too nice for the Atom family. This fight with Carson, you're gonna see me nasty. You're gonna see me. I don't, I don't know this kid. I don't like him the way he's come over and the way he's are are elected. So he's getting some of this. That's oh, what he's getting. Do you know what? I'm saying that Carson Jones obviously has knocked out his last eight opponents, and I can see. Carson Jones genuinely is coming here to fight. He's genuinely coming here to, to, to win, isn't he? he? In his head, that's what he thinks is going to happen. Obviously. Yeah, he's, he's been saying quotes like he's going to have to kill me to beat me and and all this. But you know, whatever it takes. I'm I'm 27 and no, I, I'm not going in this fight uh, thinking I'm going to lose. I'm I'm going out. I'm going to take this guy out. He's getting took out. Believe me. What sort of reception do you have here in Sheffield? Obviously, you're in the gym every day at uh, Winco Bank. But when you're out in Sheffield on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, what's the reception like from the fans and you know the people inside Sheffield to you? Yeah, I got a good, you know, um, since being with we had a match room, my profiles just hit the roof. As in, as in, wherever I go, it's not even about Sheffield. Wait, if I get like, right in Sheffield, I get, I get I get mobbed with 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 photos, autographs, and stuff like that. Uh, since going, since going, we had a big things, you know, the profile driven. But yeah, every, everyone's behind me in Sheffield. We got a packed out crowd at Sheffield Arena. They be, they're behind the fighters, the Sheffield, the, she, the Sheffield, you know, the Sheffield fans. So yeah, it's it's, it's great, you know, to uh, to have that on board, you know, the the support I've got. But even your own Sheffield people, people like Nassim Hamid and. Johnny Nelson and all these guys, you know, they, they, they rave about you and they know, obviously, um, you know, for someone like when I interviewed Nassim Hamid at your fight, yeah. you know, he was, he said that the nearest thing, obviously, you're not, he, to Naz, you're not going to be as great as him, but yeah. the nearest thing he can see to himself, <coughs> or the thing that excites him, is you, you know, and he was full of praise for you, which yeah. which you can expect in, you know, in some respects, but... He hasn't got to say these things, but 
but it looks like everyone sort of it's like we're waiting for another superstar to be born you know we and a lot of people say that it's going to be you so i'm going to deliver i'm going to deliver Kogan. What makes you so sure you're going to deliver? What, what is it in your head that tells you that? I think it's, it's my time, innit? I think, like Naz said on camera to you, I'm the nearest to him. Uh, I've had it as a young kid coming through watching Naz and he, th he always prays me, he says, every 10 years there's, there's another one and he says, you're the chosen child, you're the next one. And uh, to hear that from him, is obviously it's obviously good. But I've had pressure on me. I've had pressure on my career, and uh, I've always delivered. And and I think I, I know when when these when these elite fighters come on board, you're gonna see you're gonna see me turn into a, a monster and uh, you know deal with him. How important is the, the unbeaten record to you? Obviously, I you, you, say you're 27. You haven't you haven't experienced that that feeling of defeat yet and I hope you don't um, experience that defeat but is that on your mind to protect that record as much as anything else or do you think that you know it, that's secondary to who's in front no, of you? It, it, it's, it's, you've got to have a good record in the sense that you've never been beat you capture the public's imagination don't you you know this kid's never been beat we need to watch it. Well, when you've got losses people think oh you know he's, he's lost or whatever and it's not it's nowhere near as good is it I want. I want to keep that. I want to keep my record the way it is. Um, you can't. You can't beat a clean record. That zero is very nice. So I'm just going to continue training very hard to make sure that zero stays there, uh, because I'm. I'm in touching distance now, becoming the champ. The champ. The champ. And uh, do you think you might have this? Um, oh, listen. I'm not going to talk ahead of the Carlson Jones fight because I'm going to have a tough test in front of you. But ideally. Would you like this fight this year with the winner of Bailey and Most definitely, Jones? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Uh, definitely. I'll be, I'll be pestering Edda like you've never known. I don't think you've got to pester him too much uh, for that. I think he'll be looking for that anyway. Uh, well, I, I'm not pestering him. I'd like the I'd like the British fans to have. I would like the fight over here. That's what I'll be pestering him. Make sure that we get it over here because we need a big massive. We need a big massive fight. You know, me, me grandma and granddad are getting old now. They, they can't travel. I like, I like my granddad there ringside, because he's, he's, re, he's really into his boxing, and I'm proud that they're proud of me. And I'd love, to, I'd love to, you know, capture that world title and and be, and be, uh, you know, in front of me own fa me, me family and me, and me and me close friends, and you know, really just soak you up, you know, and and win that title. All right, Kel, listen, thank you for showing us around uh, where you grew up and that. Um, it's good to talk to you again. You always talk to us anyway, so. Yeah. Always got time for us, haven't you? Always got time. Um, we're just about to head off, actually. Uh, oh, we're rolling in the same cars as well. We're, you know, I didn't, I didn't realise. We are, weren't we? Yeah, we're rolling in the same car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is your car? It's uh, the is, down here. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'll pull over there. I didn't know. I thought this was the road for some reason. Um, yeah. yeah, now thanks for talking to us. We're going to uh, Dave Caldwell show Curtis Woodhouse versus Dale Miles. Uh, yeah, it should be yeah. uh it should be fireworks for that, they, you know. They both come punching, they they're both coming for a punch up, they're both saying that they're gonna they're both gonna knock each other out, so fireworks tonight at the at the Caldwell show. What do you call it? Steel. Real steel? Is Real it? steel. Real steel. Real yeah. steel, so let's see what it's all about in, uh, you know, not not far from now. All right, Kel, here's your car here. You can just see it there. Um, all right, well, listen, we'll see you at the show. Um, I'm sure we'll be seeing you before 7th of July at various press-related things. Yeah. So, you're looking sharp today as well. Come for green. Come for green. <laughs> Right, this is Coogan Cassius here for iFilm London in Sheffield. What part of Sheffield are we in right now? What's it called? We're in Shycliffe area, just, you know, Parsons Cross is just there touching. This is Shycliffe, Penrith Road, this is where I, I got brought, brought up. For iFilm London, thank you very much. Lights, flashlights, spotlights, strobe lights, street lights, all of the lights, all of the lights, fast lights, drug lights, thug lights, rock.